Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you an amazing retrograde analysis problem that hopefully will blow your mind. So in this position, the question is, where is this white pawn? It's on either F2 or G2. So for the purposes of this exercise, you can imagine it right between these two squares and your job is to nudge it to the appropriate square, whether it's F2 or G2. Okay, let me put this away for a moment. So that's our job. And from this information that I'm going to present to you, we're going to be able to deduce whether or not it's on F2 or G2. So I should say right off the bat that in this position, it is possible for black to castle. That's their actual move, right as this position arises. So what that means is we know that the black king and the black rook have not yet moved. And then with that information, that is enough to tell us whether or not the pawn is on F2 or G2. Okay, let's start digging into the details here. All right, so if you look, black has a bunch of pawns here, and you can count the number of captures they must have made to get to this position. So if you count like this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight captures that the black pawns made to get to this configuration. Okay, well here's a question to ask yourself. If they made eight captures, and currently there are seven pieces that are missing from white's back rank, that means they must have captured a pawn on one of these captured captures, right? So that means that one of these pawns, out of all of these pawns, one of these pawns was captured by a black pawn. Well, we know it's not these two because they're there. And we also know that the pawns on a4, b4, and c4, those came from c2, d2, and e2, right? So really the question is, we have three pawns here, the f pawn, the g pawn, and the h pawn. One of these pawns had to get captured by a black pawn. So just in case that's not clear, the reason why that is is because we counted eight captures, those are the red arrows, and we only have seven pieces missing from the back row, which means one of these pawns had to get captured. These three blue squares are the only possible places where a pawn could have been captured, where a pawn could have either promoted or captured somewhere along the line. So let's analyze these three squares. Let me take the color off. Let's analyze these three. So, we know that black can castle. So, we know that it has to be one of these three pieces, pawns I should say, one of these three pawns is going to be captured by a black pawn. Well, we know that the pawn itself can't make it over here to get captured because that's not, there's not enough captures. Instead, a pawn would have to promote in order to be captured. It has to get promote, promoted and then maybe work its way over here and then get captured. Okay, so let's ask ourselves, is it possible for this F pawn to promote? The answer to that question is no. And why? So if the F pawn were to take either toward the center, toward E, the E file, or the G file, they wouldn't be able to run up the board to promote. So if they captured on the E file, this king is not going to move because we know that black can castle. So they would stop at e7 and they would not be able to promote, which means black would not be able to capture them and we wouldn't have those eight captures that are necessary in this position, like this. Okay, so we know it's not the f pawn. Okay, what about the g pawn? Can the g pawn promote? Well, no, and for the same reason. If, g, if the g pawn were to go capture something here, it would not be able to run up the board because there's a rook here. And the same idea goes toward the F file. Okay, what about the H pawn? Can the H pawn run up the board? Well, similar to the last one, it may seem like the answer is no, but we have some captures that we can use. And I wanna make sure I make this point clear. Currently, I've already said that white has made six captures. Well, there are seven pieces missing from black's position which means I have one more capture I'm allowed to spend, right? That's the reason why this G pawn could not take here and run up the board. 
and then maybe take here, right? It has to be one capture only. That leaves me with this H pawn. This H pawn must have gone up the board and then captured something on G8 and then under promoted to, let's say, a knight or something. That way it's not giving check because we can't have the king move. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we know that this H pawn ran up the board and captured something on G8 and then got out and got captured. That makes sense. And that, that also accounts for all of black's pieces. That sounds great, but there's this H pawn of blacks that's in the way. So how does that work? Well, we have to ask ourselves again, how many pieces have been captured? We said that there are eight captures here and we have this H pawn that would be here. This pawn on H7 had to make at most one capture. So for example, if it's on H7, it has to ca capture on G6 or it has to push up the board and capture maybe on G2 or G3, go up the board. Now the question is, why did it only have to make at most one capture? And for that, I wanna make sure that it's really clear the answer why that is. So let's go through again, make sure everything's obvious. So we have eight captures here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we also established that this pawn is going to have to get out of the way for this H pawn to move forward, right? This is gonna be White's H pawn to capture right there. So maybe this is the better arrow. That means that there are nine captures for black, right? Okay, that makes sense. Well, here's the thing. It can't be 10 captures for black. Why not? Well, we have, how many pieces do we have for white? We have the pawn on A2, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this thing over here is going to get promoted and then it's gonna move over here. And then we're gonna have a pawn on F2 or G2. Remember, we're trying to figure out where that pawn is. So we have seven things on the board for white, which means we're missing nine total pieces and pawns. Therefore, two captures here is not possible. It has to be one because these red arrows have to add up to nine total captures. What that means is that this pawn on H7 had to take only one capture. Okay, what does that tell us? Believe it or not, we're at the end of this puzzle. We actually have the answer here. So this missing pawn between F2 and G2, if it were on G2, this pawn that just captured would not be able to promote. Instead, we need this pawn to be able to promote, which means that this pawn ambiguously placed pawn between F2 and G2, it must be on F2. Okay, that would allow for this pawn to capture and run up the board. Particularly, it could capture on G2, run up the board, and then promote. So, that's a lot. And I would recommend maybe taking this video slow, trying it out on your own, seeing if you can understand the pieces. The core idea is that you want to count the captures, count the pieces that are missing, and then work backwards. And this is why it's called retrograde. So you can say, where could this pawn possibly be? If it was on the H file, what would happen? If it was on the F file, what would happen? If it was on the G file, what would happen? But that's pretty much the idea. The idea is that this pawn has to get out of the way and promote in order to get captured by something else in these pawns particularly. So that is it for the video. Hopefully you're able to follow that. It's a really fun puzzle. It's quite challenging. I hope I explained it well. I did my best. Please feel free to leave me feedback in the comments. I really enjoy hearing what you have to say. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.